Hello, U.S. government. Welcome back. Picking up where we left off on the Enlightenment. So the roots of our American system of democracy, our indirect democracy here. The Enlightenment plays a major role. Uh, if you're looking at the American colonies and the 13 different colonies that are created, the Enlightenment, Enlightenment is a religious uh experiment essentially where you have political philosophers start asking the question about you know what's the role of the individual with government and that really gets started off the concept of questioning one's relationship with their government starts off with the enlightenment and what should be one's relationship with god and with your religion you can interpret the bible on your own you can read the bible on your own you can practice christianity how you want to practice christianity giving individuals more freedom and choice and then of course that uh, that leaks into government. Why shouldn't individuals have more choice in their government, more voice in their government? So the main outcome of the Enlightenment was that governments exist to protect natural rights of citizens, not to gain money and power and authority over others, but to protect those pe people within their authority. That's the major political philosopher outcome from the enlightenment that I want you guys to take away. Whether you're talking about, uh, I, I list several different um, philosophers on here. Voltaire, very, very important, uh, wrote extensively about protecting freedom of speech. William Blackstone is a British political philosopher that if you look at our constitution and our bill of rights, major, major player in, in helping develop those ideas for us. Okay. Next. What are the basics of a democracy? What are things that you have to have built into a society to have a functioning democratic society where people are active in the government? First, you have to have an idea that the worth of every individual is essential. Every person in that society has worth and value, and they, they play a role in the society. Whether you are the, the person uh, you know, digging ditches on the side of the road, or you're the CEO of the major corporation, you have worth as an individual. Second, equality of all persons. Notice, I did not say economic equality. We do not believe that everyone in the United States deserves equal amounts of money, equal amounts of opportunity. What we do believe is everyone deserves equality under the law. There should not be laws that specifically limit racial groups, genders, uh, you know, socioeconomic levels, whatever it may be. We shouldn't have laws that discriminate against you. Does that mean we have true equality in the United States and everyone has an equal shot at making a million dollars? Absolutely not. There are people that have worse educations, better educations, live in poverty, live in uh, an affluent lifestyle. All of those things can affect what kind of uh, economic outcome you're going to have, but you should be treated equally under the law. That's a major key. Majority rule, but minority rights. So right now we have Republicans in control of the House, the Senate, and the presidency. They have not made a single law saying that we need to arrest Democrats. The majority is in rule, but the minority party still has rights. 90% uh, of probably not 90%, probably 70% of Congress is white. That doesn't mean they can make laws discriminating against different minority racial groups. We have a majority and they get to make decisions for the country. They get to make decisions for their state or local government, but they can't discriminate against those minority groups. Four, necessity for compromise. This is something that we struggle with in our government. The compromise is difficult. It's giving up on some of your own core beliefs and values for the greater good and a final outcome that can be productive for the country. Um, so it's two sides coming together, sitting down, and finishing something, compromising. If you look at our Constitution, it's full of compromises. It would have never been done without the ability to compromise. And that's still true for every bill that goes through our country today. It needs to be compromised. And then lastly, insistence upon individual freedom. The insistence of our citizens permitting freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom of the press, the peaceful right to assemble and petition their government, your, your essential rights as a human being need to be protected by the government. The government cannot infringe on those rights. I love this quote from FDR, a president during the Depression in World War II. 
Democracy cannot succeed unless those who express their choice are prepared to choose wisely. The real safeguard of democracy, therefore, is education. You guys want to know why you're in this class? It's to safeguard us in our country as a democracy, to preserve our system of government. People have to understand how the system is supposed to operate and when it's not operating. So what are the responsibilities of a citizen of the United States? This is an important question. Uh, there's a lot of debates about citizenship today and whether or not some people should be citizens or not citizens and how you can acquire citizenship. Well, we need to ask the question, well, what is, what is the responsibility? What's the benefit of being a citizen? Why are we having this debate about citizenship? What do citizens do? An individual that holds rights and responsibilities within our society is a citizen in the United States. What are some of those constitutional responsibilities you have as a citizen of this country? Obey the laws of this country. Okay, You have a responsibility to vote. If you want this country to operate successfully, you need to vote. In the last election, we had about 50% voter turnout. That means half of eligible voters did not turn up to vote. That's a horrible statistic for the United States. We need people to vote. We need people to participate on juries. We have trial by jury of your peers. If you're accused of a crime, there's going to be a group of people up there that are going to determine your innocence or guilt. It is your duty as a citizen to determine others' innocence or guilt. And as you turn 18 and registered vote, your name's going to go on a book and you could be called to be served as a juror. And it's your responsibility as a citizen to determine one of your peers in your community's innocence or guilt. Paying taxes. That's a responsibility. If our society is going to function, people have to pay taxes. Now, we can debate if they should be high or low, if rich should pay more or what. But overall, um, you know, it, it's very important for us to pay those taxes. Okay, so last slide. Uh, free enterprise systems. The idea of capitalism and free markets in the United States is an essential part of our democracy. If you live in a free enterprise, it encourages freedom, it encourages innovation, it encourages entrepreneurship, which are all things that has helped the United States through the Industrial Revolution to become the largest economy in the world and the driving force of the world economy. Um, so this economic system is defined by private ownership of goods, not government ownership of goods. Uh, private individuals get to make their own investments and see what's best for them. Uh, and success or failure is dependent on competition in the marketplace. So if you create a product and you want it to be successful, you have to compete with other products to determine whether you are doing better or not. Okay, So uh, capitalism can be brutal. It can be tough. It can leave a lot of people left behind while other people gain mass amounts of wealth. That's absolutely true. That's the Bernie Sanders line. But it's also gotten us to be the leader in innovation and technology in the world. It's gotten us uh, the ability to invent multiple products and, and ideas that all around the world benefit humanity. Uh, the reason why we are the leader in medical research and technology is because we spend so much on medical uh, technology and we spend so much on those issues. So you can argue whether or not capitalism is good for the future, uh, for equality, but Surely it has made America a great country to what we are today, and there's no doubt in that. Does it affect some people negatively? Yes, but a capitalist would argue that was their decision. They made the decision, and they failed, and they have opportunities in this country to rise back up and succeed, and that's also capitalism. That's it for Unit 1, uh, the first half of it. Half of it. We will cover Topic 2 going forward. Thanks.